ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله خير نبي ارسله ارسله الله الى العالمين بشيرا ونذيرا اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا محمد صلاه وسلاما دائمين متلازمين الى يوم الدين اما بعد ايها المسلمون اوصيكم ونفسي المذنبه بتقوى الله تعالى وقال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has blessed us with one of his gifts one of the special months and special times of the year at the beginning of this week on monday we welcomed rajab which is otherwise known as shahrullah the month of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i really loved what we did in our community we revived a sunnah of looking out for the moon of looking out for the moon because we follow a visual lunar calendar and we as a community we looked and we saw the month of rajab we saw the crescent moon arrive signifying the beginning of the month of rajab so i welcome everyone to this month and in when allah when when we're told that this is shahrullah it's one of the names of this month the month of allah it means or one of the meanings or one of the lessons we can take from this is this is a good opportunity to run back to allah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of how we should journey to him in the Quran Allah says fa firru ila Allah inni lakum minhu nadhirum mubin Allah tells us so flee to Allah run firru farra is to run away from something to something and in fleeing to Allah we can understand that we can flee from everything Allah has asked us not to do in this month or everything that Allah has asked us not to do in this month we flee from all of those things and we run to him we also flee to everything that he has asked us to do and we flee from all blameworthy traits and we flee towards all praiseworthy traits we flee from everything other than Allah and we flee to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to him alone the journey to Allah is something which all of us must embark upon in fact we're told in the Quran ya ayyuhal insanu innaka kadihun ila rabbika kadhan fa mulaqih o mankind you are toiling journeying towards your lord and there's no doubt that you'll meet him when calamity befalls us we're given a reset button something to remind us of the nature of our of our life of this world we're told that ladina idha asabathum musibah qalu inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun those who when calamities befall them 
they say we belong to Allah, we are from Allah, and we are going back to Allah. This is a clear reminder for all of us of the nature of our time in this world. And we must all make a conscious effort to journey to Allah. We see that even in the tongue of the friend of Allah, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he said, Inni dhahibun ila rabbi sayahdeen. I am going to my Lord, he will guide me. So you can see going to Allah is something which we all have to do. And over the past few weeks, in the past few khutbahs, may Allah bless our Imams. They've been reminding us about the family of Imran. And if we want to journey to Allah, one of the ways of doing that is by looking at those who are close to Allah and looking at their relationship with Allah and trying to emulate something from that. Perhaps by trying to emulate them, Allah would look at us and unite us with them. And in the life of the family of Imran, there's so much that we can learn. We look at the wife of Imran. She prayed for years for Allah to bless her with a child. In her old age, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed her with a child. And no sooner that she got pregnant, she said, Rabbi inni nadhartu laka ma fi batani. O oh Allah, whatever is in my stomach, I commend to you. I give to you. It's an oath that this belongs to you. Right? She dedicates whatever was growing inside her completely to Allah. This is something we can all look at and reflect on. Anyone with a child knows the strains and the stress involved in childbirth. All the efforts, the changes that happens to a mother during pregnancy, and all the strain of childbirth. You go through all of that, and then you say, this is for you, Allah, right? We can look at many things in our lives that we strive for, whether it is to wake up in the morning, to work, to earn a halal income. And you do all of that. And when you get paid, then you give it to Allah and say, this is for you, Allah. That is one of the many things we can learn from this beautiful story. She went through all of that and she did not even benefit, quote unquote, personally. She didn't want to benefit personally from her child. She said, God, this is just for you. And some people might ask, like, then why did she ask for something when she was going to give it back to Allah in the first place? This is the reality of friends of Allah, because nothing is more beloved to them than Allah. And receiving a gift from your beloved only increases you in love from the one you love. So by them receiving a gift from Allah, it's not the gift that they want. The fact that they receive something from Allah is what they want. So for Maryam, so for the mother of Maryam, when she received this gift of a beautiful daughter, she said, Ya Allah, back to you. This is totally for you, right? She didn't make an excuse and say, oh, when she gave birth to a daughter, oh, now I can't give her because women are not allowed in the temple. No, she didn't. She said, no, this is just for Allah. And in this, she gave Maryam up for the sake of Allah, and Allah accepted from her. Allah says, فَتَقَبَّلَهَا رَبُّهَا بِقَبُولٍ حَسَنٍ Allah accepted from her with a good acceptance. Why? هَلْ جَزَاءُ الْإِحْسَانِ إِلَّا الْإِحْسَانِ Is there a reward for excellence other than excellence? She gave up everything. And Allah accepted everything from her. So much so that till date, we're still mentioning the name of Sayyida Maryam. Thousands of years after, we're still mentioning her name in places where she didn't even visit, right? By people who she would never have imagined that would mention her name. This is the result of giving something for Allah, right? Allah would take whatever you give to him 
and it will take you to places that you would never imagine would reach. So what can we learn practically from this? I want every one of us to remind, to remind themselves of blessings that you have now that you once prayed for. Things that you take for granted now, but were once reasons why you cried in Tahajjud, why you prayed for years, for months, for days, God knows how long, that you prayed for these things, and now you have those things as a gift, and you don't even think twice. Whether it's good health, whether it's a good job, whether it's promotion, whether it's children, whether it's righteous children, whatever it is. Now I ask you, when Allah gave you that gift, how did we respond? Right? And in the example of Maryam and her mother, we can learn a lot. So let's ask ourselves, for those of us that Allah has given wealth after we've asked for it, when that wealth got into your hands, did you give this money for the sake of Allah? Did you spend it in what pleases Allah or did you waste it in the life of this world? Good health that you have, how much of that of your good health have you used to serve Allah or to serve Allah's servants? Your free time, that's a blessing to have free time. How much of that do you regularly spend to draw closer to Allah? Prophet Muhammad told us, Ni'matani maghboonun fihima kathirun minan nas. There are two blessings most people are cheated when it comes to their reality. Good health and free time. Because many of us, we take our good health for granted. We think it will last forever. Go and visit a hospital and you realize the fragility of every human being. And now in the month of Allah, given these gifts that you might have once prayed for, how do we use this in a way that's pleasing to Allah? Marriage, some of us, we prayed for years, months. Oh Allah, give me a rightful spouse, you, you know? And then Allah gives you a spouse. Do you both draw closer to Allah regularly? Do you use your time to draw closer to Allah? Do you use whatever Allah blesses you for in that marriage to remember the days, the nights, the years that you prayed for it? before Allah gave it to you. This is a reminder for us all because this is the month of Allah. Allah has rights over us and it's time that we use everything that Allah has given us to return back to Him. Children, how many of us pray for righteous children? Yet, when Allah gives us righteous, intelligent children, we channel them just towards the world, just towards dunya we matters. If we have intelligent children, we go, oh, he must train him to be a doctor, train him to be this. How many of us think, wow, this brain mixed with the book of Allah, right? How will such a brain help his current, help the ummah? How will such a brain and their understanding of the Quran and Sunnah help the generation that this child will grow up in? So whatever Allah gives us as a gift, we can look at the example of Sayyidah Maryam's mother and give these things to Allah. At the very least, at the very least, with any of these blessings, let us not use them to disobey Allah. That's the very least. Whether it's your wealth, whether it's your free time, whether it's your, free, whether it's your wealth, whether it's your free time, whether it's your health, whether it's your marriage, whether it's your children, whatever it is that Allah has given you. And I'm reminding myself and everyone of the things we prayed for. Kam wa kam, how many things that we didn't even pray for that Allah gives us day by day. So all of these blessings, they deserve to be used in a way that's pleasing to the one who gave you those blessings. And in the month of Allah is the perfect opportunity to run back to him. So, as I said, the least you can do with these blessings is that you don't use them to disobey Allah. If you want to go one step higher than that, is that you use these blessings 
in a way that is pleasing to Allah. And if you want to be like Sayyida Maryam's mother, Muharraran, you use these blessings with no connection to you whatsoever. You give every single one of it back to Allah. We see with Sayyiduna Abu Bakr as Siddiq, when the time came, right, for the Battle of Tabuk, and they were asking for people to give. He gave everything. That is Muharrara. So much so that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, what did you leave for your family? He said, I left them Allah and his messenger. That is how people of Allah give to Allah. Those who are true to their covenant with Allah. And in this month of Allah, it's a reminder for all of us. Let us look at all our blessings. Whether it's free time, whether it's good health, whether it is wealth, whether it is knowledge, whatever it is that Allah has given you, how are you using that blessing to serve Allah? Okay, we have the best of examples in the Messenger of Allah. He was told to tell us, "Qul inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyai wa mamati lillahi rabbil alamin." Say, indeed, my sacrifice, indeed, my prayers. My sacrifice, my life, my death, all belongs to Allah. And that's our role model. So of all the things that Allah has given us, how much of it are we spending for him? And we know that if we spend it, if Allah accepts it, Allah says, إِلَيْهِ يَسْعَدُ الْكَلِمُ الطَّيِّبُ وَالْعَمَلُ الصَّالِحُ يَرْفَعُهُ Upon him ascends good words. And as for righteous actions, he raises it. Shaykh Ibrahim Niyas in explaining this hadith, he says, when Allah accepts a righteous action, he attributes it to himself. When Allah accepts it, you even forget that you've done it. So you see this house, all the people, for example, that strove to build this place, this house is not called theirs. It's called the house of Allah, right? So Allah has attributed this to his place. Ismail and Ibrahim السلام, when they built the Kaaba, right? Who calls the Kaaba Bayt to Ismail or Bayt to Ibrahim? No one. What do we call it? Baytullah. That's a sign of an accepted action. So that when we do these actions, when we use our free time, when we do whatever it is, our wealth, and we give it for the sake of Allah, let us not attribute it to ourselves. Let us give it completely to Allah. And look at the examples of Allah's friends, where whatever Allah gives them, they give back to Him. May Allah make us people who hear something and take the best of it. May Allah make us people who hear a speech and take the best of it. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أيها المسلمون اعلموا أن الله أمرنا بأمر عظيم بدها فيه بنفسه وثن بالملائكة القدس وثلث بالمؤمنين من من جنه وإنسه فقال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد
اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الاحياء منهم والاموات برحمتك يا مجيب الدعوات اللهم ارنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وارنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه واعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك ولا تجعلنا يا مولانا من الغافلين اللهم ات نفوسنا تقواها وزكها انت خير من زكاها انت وليها وانت مولاها اللهم انا نسالك حبك وحب من يحبك وحب عمل صالح يقربنا الى حبك يا ارحم الراحمين اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيتك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم باسمعنا وبصارنا ابدا ما ابقيتنا اللهم ارزقنا قناعه اللهم ارزقنا القناعه اللهم ارزقنا القناعه يا ارحم الراحمين واجعلنا من عبادك المخلصين برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين عباد الله رحمكم الله ان الله يامر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكر روحوا على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله اكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون اقيموا الصلاه